praying for better days We're through the storm and the rain I'm praying that, praying that it's gon' come I'm praying these keep me safe Got money, they start to hate I'm praying that, praying that they don't come And I Welcome to another episode of the Riverville Podcast. Today we have a very special guest, uh, someone that I had the pleasure of calling my teammate in college only for one year. Um, and that one year, man, he was a superstar. He showed me so much. He took me in as a little brother, even though I was a freshman. He was a senior. He was the big man on campus. Uh, his story is uh, something of perseverance, determination, and hard work. And he's literally a person that got it out the mud and earned everything he has. Uh, he's a, He plays for the Pittsburgh Steelers now. He's the first Pittsburgh student to ever be in the show. Uh, today's guest is Christian Kuhn. So, my brother, welcome to the show. Appreciate it, JD. Can you hear me all right? I can hear you good, my man. How you doing? Good. I'm good. Appreciate you having me on. Um, nah, man, it's an honor. That was a hell. That was a hell of an intro. I don't know if I was big man on campus. Big, big man on campus. Shit, man. I, I, those days are so. It's been so long. I know it's like my rookie year right now, but yeah. I'm I'm like an old ass rookie, which is normal for specialists. Like it takes. Yeah. Um, but like if I was still playing linebacker, I don't think I'd be a. I, I don't think I'd get in after four years. You know, but yeah, specialists you need kind of need that like that developmental phase to get into it. So, but damn, college was a long time ago. Now that I'm thinking about it. Hey, it felt like it was a long time ago for me and my last time playing was in 2020, but oh, your, your last year playing was my first year. So I can only imagine how it feels for you, my man. Dude. Yeah, it is. It is. It's, it's crazy. And I go up to Duquesne and I'll like watch practice. I'm like, damn, I'm like, I don't remember like the line yeah. or like, you know, like, yeah. Good ass linemen, like it's still good ass football. Like yeah. preach all the time. Like anybody that's playing any level of college football, like you're a good ass football player. Like cause yeah. it, you know, it takes like you, it just takes someone special to play football. And like yeah. it's, it, I mean every bit of that. And like, but I still go up there and I'm like, damn, the line's a little smaller than what I'm looking at now on the sideline. Yeah. For sure, that kind, of, kind of fucking crazy, but it is what it is. Man, and uh, I know I personally wanted to congratulate you on the show for finally uh, accomplishing your lifelong dream was to play in the NFL. And not only do you get to play in the NFL, but you get to play for your favorite team, which is also my favorite team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, man. So can you just talk about that dream come true, not only making it to the NFL, but playing for the city that you're from and your favorite team? It's crazy. I mean, dude, it's crazy. Like, I, I've been, obviously, I know we're going to get into the story, but, like, Jacksonville I was in New England for like what a fucking day before I got cut. I've been on like a million where I was in Denver. I was on a million workouts to Tampa, uh, Houston, freaking um, back to Denver, Detroit, New York. I, I've just had workout Green Bay. Um, I mean, you know, and I just like I can't even think about all of them. Like right now, we've just been all over the place. But to like finally landing back home in Pittsburgh and like making the 53 here for the first time it's it's like it hasn't it still hasn't hit me i'm no joke like i just bro i just play these games and like just soak it all in because it's cool as hell like i used to stands fucking waving a terrible towel and shit like yeah. plenty of game plays i used to like obviously like scream to try to help out like the defense you know what i mean and like now i'm on the sidelines like a part of it and like Dude, these wins just are like when you win in the NFL, it's different because like you, no win comes easy, bro. Like these dudes are so good, everybody at every position. Like I guess it's just like you know, win is so hard to come by. Like I know I don't care who's playing who, if the other team, if the better team on paper doesn't execute, like they're losing, they're gonna get their ass kicked. Definitely. It's just how, and like that's the kind of realness it is, and like kind of what I've. Like, I, I've just, like, it's, like, shocked me. Like, in the locker room, everything, it's just, like, wow. Everybody on, out here is, like, a stud. Yeah. And I know one thing I wanted to say, and I'm something I do with all my friends, but on my PS5, Madden 20, what is it, Madden 22 now, I believe? Just know yeah. you're 29 overall on my game, Superstar X Factor, all that. 
Uh, we went to college <laughs> together. So all my boys from back home, I kind of do something special. Um, I make like a little, not even custom rosters. I just edit the rosters and everybody I know from back home or that I play ball with. I make them a 99 overall just because I know it's such a dream come true to even be in the game. You probably played Madden growing up. So how does it feel to actually like be in the game? Not not playing it, but you can play the game. But how does it feel when you play with the Pittsburgh Steelers? You see yourself on the game number 46. Dude, no joke. I, I haven't even played Madden yet. I haven't even seen myself on it. Yeah. Probably no joke because you just remind me. I'm going to probably download it after this. And yeah. I got to like plug myself in or create something. Hey, man, what you mean? 99 everything. But, it, I mean, it, I've gotten texts about it. Like, a couple of people have texted me, like, roasting me. Like, yo, you're only a 30 overall hey, or 26. Hey, you in the game. <laughs> Everybody That's all. City in the game. Nah, but it's funny because, like, it's like everybody, like, bro. You're a thirty overall. Like you should, they should never even create you. Like, oh my friend, this hey, is funny. Though. That's all good talk, man. But hey, I just want to congratulate you again being on Madden. Uh, I look forward to looking up uh, every Sunday, uh, seeing number forty six out there. I remember um, I used to go to all the games with my friend Austin on my time at Duquesne, and I remember I believe it was in twenty nineteen when you played in the preseason game. You had number ninety nine. Uh, we were yeah. fans going crazy, man. We we're like, oh, who was in the game? Who was in the game? And we, we was in the studio. Bro, was crazy. The too. That was like crazy. I was playing linebacker. Yeah. Shit was that was ridiculous. Yeah, dude. man. But hey, uh, like I say, man, I can't congratulate you enough uh, for finally making it to the NFL, my boy. So um, I wish you a long yeah. career, a healthy career. Um, I hope that we can get a Super Bowl soon. I look, no. we, like we're building a foundation, but you know, everything's a process, but it looked like we're building the right block. So as long as we're in the right direction, man, I hope that we can get that stairway to seven real soon. Yeah, I hope so too. That would be unbelievably epic. And I don't know, you got guys that you, you got some freaks on the team. So you, you never know who starts playing good football, what month. Yeah, like, it's all about when you're playing good football. Shit's crazy. And if, no one fucking knows with these power rankings and shit. Anyone can beat anybody. Power man, rankings don't mean dick. nothing, man. That's just something for the fans to look at. I doubt people in the NFL are like, oh, my gosh, we like the number 11 team on ESPN. Like, if you go out there with that mentality on Sunday, nine times out of ten, you're going to get your ass beat. Yep, exactly, bro. They don't know, they don't know <laughs> shit. <laughs> but um, diving right into it, man, this is a question I ask everybody on the show. Um, who is Christian Kuntz? Uh, you know, People that see you on Sunday, myself, we know you as a football player. But um, who is Christian Kuntz behind closed doors when football is not around? Um, can you just uh, tell everybody that who is Christian Kuntz besides the athlete? Yeah. I, when you you uh, asked me this, you texted me, you're like, hey, just warn or whatever. But like that that question, like I tried not to even think about it because I wanted to just come out because you don't want to like boast about yourself. No, but like you kind of wonder what other people say about you. Um but like, just from I guess from what I've read, like I've got obviously like a, I'm a hard, hard ass worker. Like if I put my mind to something, like I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get that shit done. Obviously, like with my story and everything, um, I'm just a chill. I feel like relaxed dude. Like I like playing video games, hanging out with friends, going out, like whatever. Like just chilling, bro. I don't know. I don't know. That's a unique question because I, I, I like how. You that's this is a good question, but I don't know. I'd say I'm I'm a more on the like I like playing golf and just being outside, like do, doing active active yeah. stuff um, more so than like chilling. I do play video games, like I said, but other than that, like I'm just an, just another dude, yeah. just like the rest of those guys wear helmets. You Definitely. know what I mean? And another question but that I also had was, uh, what's your why? Like, what keeps you going? I know your story. We're going to get into your story as the episode goes on. But, my man, like, what keeps you going? Because from everything that I saw, from what I saw at Duquesne, uh, I know your story because I know you. Man, what kept you pushing all those years uh, from 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, all the way now into 2021? Like, what's your why? Because whatever it is, my man, it keeps you going. You done ran through every adversity that you face, every challenge you face, I feel like you took your head on from the outside looking in to ultimately get to your goal. So I just got to ask, like, what's your why? What 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 gets your juices in in, in, in uh, everything pumping when you wake up in the morning? You know, it, it's not even like, it's not like everyone thinks like, oh, the money, the money, like you do it because of the money. But 
I don't know. I just like, I never even thought about the money. I just kind of had a thought in my mind. Like I want to make the NFL. Like I need to make the NFL. Not cause I, the money, not cause like, but like, I don't know. I just like, I wanted to so bad because like, I love football. Like I legitimately like not even like being on the, the on the field part about it, but just like being in that locker room, being with dudes, like the lifts, the runs, like the jokes, like these dudes, some of these dudes are so fucking funny, bro. Like, I laugh so hard every day. Like these dudes, some of these guys are hilarious. Like, and I'm lucky enough to hang out with them, like call them friends, whatever. But like, that's the whole, that's the whole why. Like, just the camaraderie with everybody, just the, the team game that football is. Like, we love football because of that. Like, people love football because of so, like watching it. Like, like, we as players love football. Cause like we know what that team feelings like, like winning a big game or like some one of your boys making a big play or something like. That's why we love football. Other people that don't play love it because they love like the game, the actual yeah. game like, yeah. that that happened. Like, yo, know, sure we love that yeah. shit. Like, but it's the moments that make us love it, and that's like kind of. I just wanted to. I always want to be a part of something like that, whether I'm coaching after or whatever. But like. The, can't, you can't get that in a work no, setting, no, like nine no, to five. Or something I know personally, uh, it made me meet so many people. Um, and football was kind of a therapy for myself. Like I know when I was going through things I went through, I didn't make it to the NFL, obviously. But even I think playing at Little League, college, high school, um, football is something that no matter what you're going through in life, once you step on that field, it's kind of like your sanctuary. If you're going through problems at home, once you step on that field, it's like, I don't know what the football field does, but once you like locked in the game mode or practice mode, it's like everything that's happening off the field, you don't even think about it. Like football just kind of like gives you a taste of therapy. No, exactly. Like that's that's spot on. And I guess that's like answers your question on the, the why. Like, because you know the feeling and other guys know the feeling that played. Um, that's the why. And like, yeah, there was, I, I didn't want to prove anyone wrong. No, like, I'm sure there were people that said like, what's he doing? Still trying. Like he, he got, there are a hundred percent. There were people that said that like, um, and like, just like people said, I wouldn't play at Duquesne and stuff. Like, cause it was too high levels. I didn't play in high school basically. Um, but there, I didn't even care about proving them wrong. Cause like there's less than 1% of the people make it to the NFL. So I was cool with that. Like I wasn't proving, proving, trying to prove them. Wrong. I was more so just trying to, prove myself right that like I wanted to get there and I could put my mind right. to something to get there and that's what I Definitely. did so I guess starting on your journey um he has a crazy story guys so I can't wait to get into which we are now um starting in high school I remember that you told me that you suffered an injury your senior year um you ruptured your spleen if I'm mm -hmm. not mistaken you missed your whole senior season of football um and then you ended up walking on to Duquesne. So I guess, how does it feel knowing that you wanted to play football at Duquesne? And I wanted to wear my shirt. I don't got it on, but I got my pick and stuff right here. Um, how did it feel, I guess, in high school, knowing like you definitely wanted to go to the next level? You probably you know you had the size and the capabilities to go to the next level. But um, once you got hurt, like how did that take a mental toll on you? Like, did you ever think like, damn, maybe I may not play college football, maybe um, maybe my football career is over. Did you ever have thoughts like that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I like pre even before my sophomore year, I actually like broke my back. I fractured my vertebrae um, bad playing in the yeah. field championship game here in, in Pittsburgh. Um, and that's, that put me out then like in the football season, it bugged me junior year. So I really only played like four games, my junior year, five games, maybe. I mean, I was playing well, whatever, like it was going well, getting letters, whatever, But we, and it, it was what it was. But then my senior year came in, and I was supposed to play quarterback. Like we ran a triple option, and um, you remember Wayne Capers? You remember Wayne? Yeah. We had Wayne. Wayne in high school, like you know how athletic Wayne was. So um, we were pretty loaded, and, you know, I got hurt, and they told me I was done, and, they like, won't play football. And I was like, oh, shit. I actually went to Coach McConnell, TJ. TJ McConnell's in the NBA. That's who was on our team. Um, yeah. Signed a $35 million deal with the Pacers. <laughs> but um, Football? Huh? I said TJ played football? Uh, he didn't. He wasn't allowed to play football. Those oh, okay. 
Oh yeah. Um, but so I actually went to coach McConnell who I was like super tight with and still am. And I just basically said to him, I'm like, can you teach me how to shoot? Cause I was like, I was decently athletic enough. I could dribble, whatever. I was like, you could teach me how to shoot. He's like, if I could teach you how to shoot and you shoot decent enough, like you'll get a scholarship. So I was like, my eggs went from football. Oh, I got yeah. it. Oh, you could play basketball season though. And all my eggs went into basketball basketball. Like, damn, am I going to have to try to get college pay for playing hoops? Like shit. I can't even shoot a three. I suck. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, and then like more schools came in and they were like, we're still interested for you to even walk on here. Um, like D2 schools, uh, shit, like a D D2 with the X school, West Virginia, Charleston, um, West Virginia, they wanted me to, they, they like offered me like 10,000 or, or something like that. And yeah. ultimately I just like wanted to be closer to home, bro. Like I was close to home. Was, so that's why I like just someone new coach Mitt will say he came and recruited me, but bro, yeah. not come and recruit me. He was coming to yeah. see his basketball game. He, yeah. He was coming to see – if he says I was on his list, he was coming to see me, and if he watches this, he was coming to watch me as a walk-on to see if I could practice there. No yeah. joke. He yeah, didn't – player. No, he did not know. He was coming to see <laughs> me. Yeah, he, he was going to allow me to walk on. That's what he was going to do. Yeah. And that's what he did. But he ultimately was coming to see Wayne because they dual sport offered that motherfucker. Definitely. Definitely. So – he says he recruited me. I end up going there freshman year. Like, we're playing at Old Dominion, bro. And I never th- I would have imagined I would have even played in this game. And it sold out with, like, 28,000. Taylor Heineke, the quarterback for Washington football yeah, team. Yeah. Like, literally just signed a massive deal. He was their yeah. quarterback. Dude they, were, dude, they were stacked. Like, he's a stud. Yeah, yeah he is. Taylor Heineke, stud. And, um, bro. Uh, I just had like I think I had 14 tackles and, a, and I had that pick six and everyone was like who the fuck is this guy like yeah. who like how did he just do that he, he didn't even play in high school like yeah. showed up he went to camp as like a walk on and <laughs> Coach Schmidt and Ophar were probably like what the f-? they would say they looked at each other at half they were like what the fuck just happened like maybe, maybe, maybe we got something yeah but like we were beating ODU at halftime and we went on to lose, and I think we lost pretty bad. But, like, just that whole moment was sick. And then, like, um, sophomore year, obviously, like, I, I didn't start the remaining of freshman year. I just played on, like, third downs and stuff as a cover. Mm-hmm. Like, but, like, uh, like, surprisingly, like, yeah. I blitzed all my career. And, like, freshman year, I was a cover. I was in on third downs and played all specials. Yeah. And sophomore year, I started. And, um uh, Shit, I, I had, we had unreal coaching, like Coach Rach. He's with the coach, coaching for the Colts now. Um, D line coach, he was amazing. He came from Arizona, like he just put us, put me in spots, you know, like just almost easy to make plays. And like our whole defense was loaded, but I won All American that year. And I went into Coach Schmidt's office and I asked for a full ride. He said, "Yeah, it's already like you're good. Like we got you." So that's when that. I just say, if you are all American, man, you, I feel like you got to be on full scholarship, man. That's automatic. Yeah. Especially if you put in the work in and you earned it. It's not like they they gave it to you. Like you went out there and you earned it. Um, but I guess you answered one of my questions already. One of my questions was like being a walk on. What was that moment that kind of that you kind of knew like, damn, I can be a superstar here. But I guess you had fourteen tackles in the pick six. That that was probably your. Hey man, I'm here moment type thing, and then I probably built up a lot of confidence. I'm assuming for yourself, which kind of led on for you to have yeah. these crazy accolades in college. Yeah, for sure, that was definitely the moment where I, I didn't think like at that moment, damn, I could dominate here. But I definitely that definitely hit my confidence. Like definitely. you could play here, like you good. You're a freshman, you just made these plays. Yeah. You're gonna be all right. So like that was kind of that moment. Um, but then there were humbling moments, like. I'm playing on third down. I'm getting beat on a slant inside when I've got inside leverage. Like, yeah. fucking getting – they're running a draw and that guard's coming up. I'm getting pounded. Like, there was humbling moments yeah. for sure. Because that football is high-level football. I don't care what yeah. anyone says. That's it, the good with the bad. For sure. So, it wasn't all, like, 
glit and glamour. Like, I wasn't just making plays. Like, there were plays where I got fucked up, bro. Yeah. So it happens to the best of us, man. I think um, this past year, I seen I was watching the Rams game, and I think Aaron Donald got pancaked. And my little brother was watching. He was like, "Aaron Donald just got a pancake, yada yada yada." Like he like thirteen, so he was going crazy. I'm like, man, if you play the game long enough, if you the best corner, I'm pretty sure Jalen Ramsey, the best corner in the NFL, in my opinion, he probably got beat for a touchdown. They like the best of us always have bad days, bad plays, but um, I don't know how you bounce back. I feel like exactly like these dudes, these all these dudes are too good that like. You ain't gonna, you ain't gonna get God. I guess you can say yeah. like, you're, you're always, someone's always gonna get you one, one time or another. Yeah, like, yeah I guess you just gotta get yours more than you get God. That's exactly. That, that is what exactly. happens to the best of us, man. Like I say, Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald. When you see guys like that, like even LeBron James, like he misses shots. Like somebody would think if LeBron James can, he the best in the world. He shouldn't miss a shot, but realistically, everybody know that's not even possible. Yeah. But I'm going to read out these stats that you had and just tell me what you think about it, man. From being a walk-on, everybody keep in mind that Coom started as a walk-on, but in your career at Duquesne, you were a two-time second-team AP All-American in 2015 and 2016. You hold the school record at Duquesne for sacks overall at 30.5. You were a two-time NEC Defensive Player of the Year, and you are sixth all-time in the FCS and tackles for loss. That's like all from, I guess, since stats have been getting tracked, you're sixth all time on the FCS list for tackles for loss. How does that feel? Yeah, you, bro, I didn't even know that, but like, I, the accolades, I still like, I don't even give, I don't even give a damn about the accolades. Like, went to the playoffs, like at William and Mary, we played our ass off. We played some big games, like, and like, there's certain games and say certain moments like I'll never forget because like, like I said, we're playing. You're playing with your boys. Like it was, great. um, but like the accolades, I could honestly like give a shit about. You know, it is what it is. Like, but if I, I wouldn't change my college experience for anything just because like the dudes I met and the time I had for sure and like experience. Real. Definitely, Duquesne is like a smaller school, so it was very family oriented. But um, I know it was a pleasure for me. My Your senior year, your last year at Duquesne was my freshman year, and I know I redshirted that year. So all the games I watched, I was always on the sideline. I didn't have to worry about playing. Sometimes in the second half, when we went in for halftime, I just leave my helmet in the locker room because I knew I wasn't playing. I just come back on the thing, no helmet, no gloves, snacks in my hand, warmer, just because I'm like, I'm going to go ahead and watch a show. And I know most of the players, I was just kind of watching you. I remember we had Nate Stone. We had different people. But for the most part, I was watching 43. On uh, on Saturdays, watching you go crazy, and it was kind of like it was crazy to me because South Florida, where I came from, you know, South Florida, we're known for making skill position guys. So we like we we make the best running backs, receivers, defensive backs here and there. You know, we will have a good defensive end, a good defensive tackle. Like Brian yeah. Burns, who played for the Carolina Panthers, I played against him twice yeah. in high school, and he, he he's a freak. Like he like six five, six six, and he run like a deer. But I know I wasn't used to seeing guys that were so dominant on the edge. So my first year at Duquesne, seeing what you was doing to guys, it was just kind of, I was like, man, what the fuck? Like, this is my first time seeing somebody, like, on the D-line, like, just going crazy, just, like, wreaking havoc. It's like, you know what's coming, but you can't stop it. So, you know, just coming from me, man, I want to say it was a pleasure watching you in college, watching your body of work, and then seeing all these accolades that I see, man, it's crazy. Because I, I seen the bitter end of it. But if you told me from what I seen my freshman year that you was a walk on, you had zero offers in high school, um, and all that kind of stuff, I'd be like, man, there's no fucking way. Because what I'm seeing now, I feel like you were supposed to get drafted from what I was seeing, man. It was crazy. But I know you definitely one of the best defensive players I've ever seen in my life, man. I mean, it, it was. I just think like it it played out perfectly with like how our defense yeah. was set up, and then like what I was good at. Like, I don't, I don't know. They, they, whatever position I was playing, like they knew where to put me to, to know, like, yeah, he's going to make that play yeah. if he's in there. Like if he puts in that B gap and he's good, he gets a one-on-one -on -one with the back. Like he's winning that one-on-one, -on -one, whether he's running him over or Definitely. swimming. Him. Like he's like, so like, that's kind of how I feel like they were. They were like, like Ofar and, and Schmidt kind of were just probably like, what can we do to get him into any sort of one-on-one -on -one with anybody? And 
that's how you get Definitely. wins. And like, I, that was like kind of hats off to them with that defense, honestly. And like letting me go inside sometimes on the tight end, like just like basically fucking yeah. with tight ends, um, making them try to block me one on one. And that was kind of where I think I got that all those yeah. advantages. And I know um, from attending Duquesne and from being there, you know that a lot of people. The, like a lot of people don't go pro from Duquesne. It's a smaller school. We have one of the smallest stadiums in the FCS, if not the smallest. And um, I Probably. think one of, if I'm not mistaken, I hope I'm wrong, but I think the only person that made it to the NFL that actually made like a 53 man roster besides you was I think his name was Lehigh Bowden, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I played in, for the Patriots. He played defensive back. Yeah, Lee Bond. Lee Bond. Lee I'm Bond. sorry, my man. Lee Bodden, Bodden. B O D D E. Yeah. yeah. He was a corner. He was like, you ask people about him, and, like, if he got a pick, yeah. he was he crippled. Special. Like, it was, yeah. So he was, he, I mean, he played, I think he played nine or 10 years in the league. Like, he's, so yeah. he's a dog. If you play, bro, you are Definitely. unbelievable. So I guess the question that I had was, um, when did you know going to Duquesne, knowing that a lot of people don't make it professionally? When did you know that the NFL was a real possibility? Um, and, like, what did you do to try to make that reality a possibility or make that possibility a reality? You know, I really didn't, like, I really never thought it, never thought it was real until, like, after my junior year, I started getting hit up by agents. And, like, like agents wouldn't just, like, they ain't just going to waste your time or do you a favor, like, like, they're in it for themselves, too, you know? They want to make their money. So, I guess that's kind of when, like, I realized, damn, it's I actually do got a shot. Um, but then I got there at linebacker. I'm like, damn, these edge guys look a little bigger than me. Damn, these middle guys are a lot faster yeah. than me. I'm like, damn, I better start <laughs> long snap. So, that kind of follows right up, right, right up until my next question. Um, what made you make that transition, or how was that transition? I guess both. Why and how did you make the transition from linebacker to long snapping? You know, I did it at Duquesne for a little. I was always, like, decent at it. Like, never. There's a lot more to, like, pro long snapping than there is, like, college. Just, like, because you got to block in in the pros. Like, dudes are coming. Like, you got to block. You got to snap. Yeah, get your head up quick and block. But, um. I just I had a workout. Oops. I had a workout in in Denver, and um, a guy that I went to Duquesne's on their personnel staff, and he he knew I did long snap. And after the the workout as a linebacker, he just straight up said, yeah. "Let's see you long snap." And I did it, and like that was after coming from Houston, who I was mm-hmm. there with Larry Izzo, who the special teams coordinator in Seattle, right now. And Izzo told me when I was down there, he did the same thing with me. He told me, bro, you got a long snap. Like, this is mm-hmm. where your money's at. And I went on, still worked out long snap, and, or still worked out, mm-hmm. like, as a linebacker, but started doing the little things, like, snap, and then went to Green Bay, saw the dude from Duquesne, mm-hmm. John Woge, at new, told me after the workout the same thing. Like, this is long snapping. Like, you got to start long because you mm-hmm. have something special. You just got to do some things. And fuck, it took me three and a half years, four years, but fuck hey, it. Man. If somebody can tell me I long snap right now being in the NFL, I'll be long snapping. I don't care what nobody got to say to me. Some people be in the exactly. NFL, man, but no. long snapping, center, DB. Hey, if you're in the NFL, you're in the NFL. So man, it's crazy being there. Yeah. But um, I know that. I think I seen you were training with somebody named Coach Zoner. I looked it up on YouTube. Um, how, do you, yeah. like, how do you think that helped you? Your career with long snapping over the time, do you think that kind of elevated your long snapping to a point where you like knew, like if I do X, Y, Z, I know for sure I can get a shot in the NFL and potentially make the roster? Not really. I mean, bro, you got to get, like, you got to have a coach really like you or you, like, you got to be right place, right time. There's a lot of good guys on the street, like, like there, there always is like good guy. Like, so that's kind of how the men, like your mentality has to be there. Like there's always people yeah. trying to get to where I'm at and they're trying a job. And like, that's how you got to train. And that's how like my mindset yeah. is like, I don't want anybody like, come job. like, 
Like, I, no, that ain't how that shit ain't happening. So like that, that's going to keep me going and keep me working out and keep mm-hmm. me refining my skills. But um, coach Zahner was great. Like he was a special teams coordinator for years and mm-hmm. like, he just knows his shit. Um, work with like I, I, I credited both guys I work with coach Zahner and um uh Kyle Stel guy with special teams you um he's really helped he's all like technique and different stuff like they're different coaches there's different stuff people think like oh there's only one right way to snap one one right way to like that's like fucking saying to somebody there's only one yeah, yeah, right yeah. way to swing a golf club like you think, like, okay, so Tiger's yeah, yeah. the only one that does it right then? Like no, like fucking you got Dustin, DJ, you got Rory, all these guys. Like fuck, it, like there's no the so like it, long snapping in golf is like similar. You're out there for one play, you snap, whatever, you're done. You sit around, you, wait, you walk, you snap, yeah. you hit, whatever. Like so, like there's no real coach. So like, like everybody has their own style of coaching and whatever works for you as a specialist, like run with that. And both of those guys have like yeah, no, helped no, me I tremendously. It's testament to, it sounds so cliche. I think when you're in a moment in college where um, coaches are telling you like, take special team serious, um, get on a special team. Like most people be like, Oh, I never played special team in high school. I was always a star player. But when you get to that next level, it's like you on a team full of star players. So now it's going to be like, what separation Then ultimately in the NFL, if you're not, a starter, basically from what I seen from the outside looking in, if you're not like a starter or a key player, nine times out of ten, to make the team, you gotta play special teams. So I know um it's super important for I know whoever watching this, if you're playing football, no matter what at what level, man, just make sure you take special teams serious. What for sure, like <laughs> If you ain't a superstar, you ain't fucking seeing the field on offense or defense. So you better – your ass better be playing yeah. special teams or you ain't going to make it. You can't play – you ain't going to make it. But these dudes yeah, that are playing freaks. special teams are freaks. Yeah. These back – freaks. Like these dudes – these people don't understand. And, um, <laughs> I know talking about your perseverance, saying that you had a story, uh, I don't think we went into quite detail, but – I'm going to say this thing. I'm going to say like this list for people just to wrap their head around why I say like your stories, like you really got it out of the mud at each level. Like you said, in high school, you were unable to play your senior year because you ruptured your spleen. In college, you tore your ACL. You walked on to eventually become an All-American. And then you would think after that, like all the trials and tribulations are done, but it didn't even stop there. When you got to the NFL in 2017, you um, signed to the New England Patriots. And I believe if I read it right, that they cut you the very next day. Um, in 2018, yeah. you participated or you like you signed with the Denver Broncos and the Jacksonville Jaguars, ended up getting released. 2019, you were with the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, got released. 2020, you were with the XFL, the Dallas Renegades. And after that, I believe you signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And if I'm not mistaken, you got released again. And in 2021, yep. they signed you again, and you ultimately uh, won a 53-man roster spot. So I guess just talking about that journey, my man, like what kept you going? Because I know a lot of people, once you got – like once you once a person gets cut, like maybe 2017, 2018, 2019, man, they probably like, man, fuck this. I don't want to go through this no more. I feel like I'm wasting my time. So, like, what kept you going? Like, you like, man, like, I know, like, I feel like I'm right there. Like, 2017, cut. 2018, like, man, I can come back even better. 2019, to get cut again. 2020, like, man, I'm right here. To finally get to 2021, you like, like, damn, like, I made it. So, man, what was your mentality, I guess, going through that? Like, how did, like, how did that affect your mental, knowing that you were right there by your dream to get it kind of, in a way, snatched from you? Like, how did that take a toll on your mental health? And how did you kind of get back in that mode where you like, man, I got cut, like I got knocked down, but I know I can get back up and I can achieve it. Yeah, I mean, like, it definitely, like, sucked. Like, each time you got cut, like, I'll never forget the time in Denver I got cut. Like, looking back on it, like, I had no chance of winning the job. I wasn't mm-hmm. ready. Like, now I know what it takes to be ready at that time but they cut me on the last day of OTAs um 
that that and that sucked. Like you go through work, like you bust your balls for OTAs and shit, and like um, you work so hard to get there, and you're so excited to be like done with OTAs because mm-hmm. you have four weeks off, and that's like your summer and training mm-hmm. camp, and like they cut you on the last day of OTAs. That happened to me in Denver. I came like I I don't even know if you know this. I uh, so after that I came home. I was home for like. So I got cut in June. That's when OT. That's when OTAs end. I was home July, August, September, October. Four months. Um, I accepted a real sales job, like a real, like mm-hmm. with a company, like a real sales job, um, Arizona. So with my boy Pat, who was my college roommate, so we packed up a U-Haul from Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. no shit, with our car trailered on the back, and I shipped my, and we drove to Arizona, and I moved to Arizona. So I lived in Arizona from October, November, and and during that time, um, I was working and I worked for two days, and then they flew me to Dallas mm-hmm. to do like corporate training for the sales gig. Like a hundred people in this sales room, and these ladies were like doing these like mock mock whatever the hell they're calling mock sales pitches, whatever, and um, like people have been with these co- this company for like six months, three months, five months, two years. And they just get to this training sessions because it was so big with all these sales reps. Yeah. So they've been selling the product and they know I just started two yeah. days ago filling out paperwork and then they flew me to Dallas to train. So I'm in sitting in, <clears throat> I'm sitting in this uh, training session in Dallas. I didn't even pack workout clothes because I was only going to be there for yeah. Thursday and Friday, two days, come home, whatever, back to Phoenix. And uh, the, these two intimidating ass sales ladies go, we're going to take a break. Uh, when we come back, though, we're going to do uh, two people are going to come to the center of the room in front of hundreds of people, dude. Hundreds. Of people. And they're like, and we're going to uh, do a mock like sales pitch. And the two people are we'll pick yeah. random names, Christian Kunz and whoever. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like. Bro, I'm about to do so. I go out, I turn my phone on, and bro, thank God I had like 30 missed calls yeah. and messages from my agent. My brother's like, Yo, you get yeah. out of that meeting now. Like, New England wants to yeah. re sign you, they want you to come up out and sign you. So, I'm, oh my God, I turn on my phone, I'm like, Holy shit, like, I'm getting out of this sales pitch I'm with New yeah. England again. This is unreal. I haven't heard anything in like five months. I'm fired up. I go to these sales yeah. ladies. I'm like, hey, I'm out. Like, I, I'm qu- I quit. Like, I'm, I'm going to sign. Like, bro. And I get up to New England, and I don't have anything. I, I just show up to my workout yeah. in in a business like business clothes, like dress pants, dress shirt. Like, yeah. I didn't have nothing. They had to give me socks, underwear to work out. I, they don't sign me. Yeah. They sign another guy. So now I'm out of a job. Um, I quit. They didn't sign me um, like they said they were. So I Phoenix, I was like Uber Eats. Yeah. I was doing Uber Eats. I was door dashing. Um, just doing that shit to pay rent until finally I was like, fuck it. Like, got to come back to Pittsburgh. I came back to Pittsburgh for like three weeks. I was just living back home. Um, got someone to sublease my place in Arizona. And that's yeah. when Jackson will sign me to their practice squad at the end of the year. And then went through that year um and then at the end of the like was on the p squad luckily for the last like three weeks of the season in jacksonville four weeks whatever it was and then they cut me jacksonville cut me at the end of their otas last day so i was back to square one before pittsburgh saved me you know what i mean yeah but it was like that sequence is like crazy honestly like can't make that shit up like i took this sales job bro my friends like here know i took a real job and they like make fun of me like bro you made it two days in the real world (laughs) but like that's that's kind of like that's like the seek that's that crazy i see so i guess finally making how i got there um how does it feel i guess to wear the black and gold and to actually go out there and uh like play in actual regular season games for the first time. Like, how, how does that feel to be in a real atmosphere where it's not preseason, it's not practice, it's, like, actually, like, you under the lights. Like, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers, we just played Sunday night football. Like, how did that feel knowing, like, man, we're on national TV and, like, 
I remember these times when I was like doing Uber Eats. I was doing this and like, man, look where I'm at now. Like, like, did you ever have that moment where you kind of like sat down on the field and you were like, just kind of looking like, man, I went through all I went through, but look, man, I'm finally here. Yeah, kind of like in Buffalo, like coming out and they're booing, 80,000 are booing. It's like, you just, you're out there like, I don't even, I can't even really explain it. It's just like, holy shit. And you like get the goosebumps. You're like, dude, look. I just like catch me looking around. That's like moments like, like that. Man, you're like, I know I was at this Buffalo is so myself fucking and, sick. Um, I was sitting on the bill sideline. I was the only person over there with the Steelers jersey on. And uh, they gave me a, they, they gave me a hard time. First half, I think we was losing 10 zip. And then we ultimately came back. So they got the first laugh, but I got the last laugh. But I know even being in the stands, that was like my first time being at an away Steelers game. Like all the Steelers game I went to, it was at Hans Field. So I got that feel like, how does it feel to be on the road? Like I told my yeah. friend, like I was like my friend, Zach Musk, I was staying at his house, his agent and everybody was over there. Like, how the hell are you over here? And you wearing all Steelers stuff. Like, what? like that's type of disrespect. I'm like, man, listen, I want to go to this game. I want to see how I feel to be on a, like support your team on the road. And um, man, I can only imagine how, how like how the goosebumps you had because I was on the stands and like I was looking like I was a player. I'm like, man, this is crazy. Like I got the fans talking shit to me and I'm talking back. Like it, it was just crazy. It was super fun. So I can only I can only imagine how it was on the field because I think Bills Mafia that's- is real. Like that's one of the craziest fan bases in the in the NFL, and they did the point, bro. Yeah. Hey, Brills Mafia is real. Yeah, man, the pregame, like, the, the bro, they were wild. Man, I got the whole I experience, it. man. It was crazy. I definitely enjoyed my time in Buffalo, and then we ultimately got the win. So um, when we finally got back to my boy house, like he stayed like a couple minutes from the stadium. We got back to his house. I got my Steelers stuff on. Everybody super quiet in the house, you know. So like everybody was talking trash to me in the beginning, but when we got back to the house, I'm, I had the last laugh there because everybody like, man, we come back, we are gonna burn that Steelers jersey, we gonna do this, that, 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 that. that. I'm like, all right, so everybody hold y'all build stuff up. Let's set it on fire. So, man, that was crazy. That that was a good talk. But, um, man, yeah, I think we're at the end of the road. So, funny. is it um, what's going on off the field with with Christian Coates? Like, when you leave the Steelers facility, um, what is something you're doing like to get your mind off football? What's just something that you're doing all, like off the field? Bro, honestly, I'm just like, it's been so, I've been so busy because like I moved from a different spot too. So I've been like in the process, me and my girlfriend uh, in the process of just like moving all of our stuff, like that just finally finished. So like, finally, we just get a chance to relax, like just kick it. I do play the video. I still go golfing. Um, Just anything to kind of like a lot of Netflix, Squid Game, Netflix, like Anything that really just keep your mind off of football when you're not there, because you'll drive like I've and I'm guilty of it, 100. percent Like you'll drive, I'll drive myself crazy if I keep looking at the film, uh, a snap that I I wasn't happy with. Like yeah, I'll beat myself up over that shit, and I do, mm-hmm. I still do. But like I'm try, I try to keep my mind off it. But I know I just it is what it is. Like, you, show watcher, so on you just gotta Netflix, be better. Have you seen Narcos with Pablo Escobar? Hey. I gotta watch that. I can't. I have the sub- Coons, crazy. subtitles kind of. Like, and I don't even. I, I keep it, but Narcos got me hooked. Like I, I love it. It's like, Bro, crazy. I watched it. I watched it. Dude, I watched it. You got yeah, my little brother. Was, watch like, he told me about it. Me. So when I finally got him, like okay. I guess he heard like the little noise that they make when you know they go into like the little like the oh oh. He ran up. Hey, what you doing watching this? And I watched it. I liked it. I liked it, but I, I think I like yeah. more like action stuff like Narcos. It get crazy. Like I never got into it, man. I gotta, about, I gotta uh, watch, watch it again. I, I, I think I watched like the first two episodes, and it just didn't catch my attention. But a lot of people talk about Ozark, so I gotta go back and watch. I know my parents watch it all day, like every day, every day. Yeah, man. Ozark, Ozark is fire. I'm telling you. Oh, let me see, man. Show the people, I'm man. Fine. You miss this city right here? Let me flip this. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I got to come back, man. 
You missed the city. Yeah, a lot of sun that, here, man. It was finally cloudy. No sun day, here, bro. No sun. Every day, bro. Yeah, I gotta oh, give him that ice man. bath, man. I'm sore. I lifted legs yesterday. I did. I did today. I have to, dude. I, that's the one thing I like. Like, yeah. I wish I could change. Like in college, I wish I would have took care of my body more. Definitely. But, fuck. It worked out course, for me. Man, I'm I right. appreciate I'm you being a part of the show, joining. I hit you up. You didn't even hesitate, man. You said, man, let's do it. So that's something I, I, I really appreciate, man. Um, I hope the people enjoyed your story. Sure. And uh, hopefully after we make a nice run after this year, man, we can probably hop on another episode, talk about how the season went, and we can just get a recap of the whole season. So, my man, yeah. we wishing you luck. I hope all my viewers wishing you luck. They might not all be still a fans, yes. but you feel me? Y'all know how we coming, baby. Still a nation. Yeah. We here. Uh, yes, sir. I appreciate you, J.D. On and, uh, hey, good luck on yeah, the season, man. Hit me up about, uh, Claypool, Claypool is actually when I won my competition. Claypool was one of the guest appearances. Like he was like he he gave me a shout out and stuff. He um like said he gave my uh, podcast a shout out. So if you see my man in the locker room, let him know I'm coming for him, man. I need him on the floor. Uh, I will. Did you? We're we're uh. Like how many followers? Trying like, are you the, trying, to, trying like, to take it to the moon. blow this podcast up? Or are you doing this more of like a? So hey, anybody, man, the kicker, I don't care, right, man. I anybody that's it. willing, I, I know it. I actually it. partnered with you guys when I won the competition. Um, one of the benefits that I won, I was partnered with the Steelers. I don't know if you know her name is Blair Holmes. Yeah. Blair, yeah, that's somebody like she's my advisor, quote unquote, for the podcast. Yeah, Blair. Yeah, and I know sure. she said you guys super busy during the season, but I'm kind of partnering with her, and um, she she's gonna give me like some access to some players, I guess. But I'm gonna actually shoot her a text like right after we get off and let her know because um, she said like. It was the beginning of the season we was talking, so she was super busy. But, hey, man, we got to get this ball rolling, man. It's a real Stiller fan here. So, man, it's yeah. only right that, you know, we support the guys, get the guys a platform where they can come and just talk their mind. Um, I know some interviews you got to be politically correct and stuff, but, you know, I feel like it's very important for athletes to also have a space where they can just come let their guard down and just talk their talk. So I'm hoping, you know, this this, this podcast can be the start of something special, man. You my third episode. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, it's only going to be after here. So, like I said, man, I appreciate you um, being willing to jump on the podcast, talk about your story, man. But thank you, man. We wish you the best of luck. Um, sending much love from Miami to Pittsburgh. And, man, let's go win the Super Bowl. Let's go surprise everybody. Yes, right, sir. I appreciate it, JD. Let's uh, keep in touch and we'll uh, link out to the season. <laughs> I'm praying for better days with through the storm and the rain. I'm praying that, praying that it's gon' come. I'm praying they keep me safe, got money, they start to hate. I'm praying that, praying that they don't come. And I